You're listening to the Teach Better Talk podcast featuring expert educators eager to share progressive tactics to reach more students. Teach Better Talk is created by teachers and fueled by passion. Let's get started. to episode 236 of Teach Better Talk. My name is Ray Hewer, and as always, I'm with my really, really decent co-host, Mr. <laughs> Jeff Gargas. Jeff, happy 2021. It was so fun cheersing with you, actually, right after Mastery Chat on New Year's Eve. If you yep. didn't catch that video, you can go catch that over on our YouTube channel. We always recap our Twitter chats, but now it is, you know... We're actually into 2021 now, and do you feel totally different? Like, do feel you feel like totally a whole new different. person? Um, 100%? I feel really, really, really decent. Um, really decent. That's what I feel, because <laughs> I feel like, man, that's a great, we're kicking off the the year with a great, just very nice intro from you of a very, very decent, or really, really decent, or whatever you said. I don't know. I feel, I'm excited. Um, here's what I'm most excited about in 2021. This episode? Just kidding. No, that we can go back and just write in two letters when you're dating stuff or two numbers at the end because we've always had to do for 2020. If you didn't know, you wrote 2020 because if you just wrote 20, they could put any two numbers after it, make it 2019, 2018 on like a check or something. Now you can just write 21. That's okay, just I, awesome to me. It's, I literally it's never thought two of that. Two fewer ever. numbers every time I write that day. You know how much time that adds up to, Ray? I'm, seconds. Seconds I'm and so... seconds. Just I'm so given sorry. back to me. I've already got that gift this year. Thank you, 2021. It's already better than 2020. Like, boom, done. This is the most fascinating conversation I've had this year yet. Let me tell you. <laughs> Wait, so for our listeners, I want you guys to know we are recording on a on a Saturday morning today. A Saturday morning. A little weird so, for us. It is weird for us, but don't worry. We're recording on a Saturday morning today, and we'll still be recording Monday, this coming Monday, when we, we normally are. record so we, um, it, it's a little different. We're drinking coffee rather than like the water or like say, I was energy like, just, drinks. I pulled my coffee cup. I'm like, oh, shoot. Well, should I drink? No, I'll drink now uh, that you mentioned Exactly. It. <laughs> I did the same thing. I took a step and I was like, oh, awkward. I'm drinking out of a coffee mug because it's I mean, 8 o'clock in the morning. If, if, if we're talking that, obviously, if you're just listening on the podcast, you can't see us. So this is stupid. Right. But like, we're also on the YouTube channel so like you can see us. But it is what it is, you know? I mean, it's it Saturday morning. We're having a good time. We're recording a couple episodes today, which is great. So I do want to give, I know we have like something we were going to talk about. And then I want to get into this episode. Amanda's one of my favorite people. And she did so, so well with these questions. So yes. stay tuned for that. But a little shenanigans here. Um, did you see Mark Horner's post this morning, his blog post of his word for 2021? I, I saw it, but I, I have not read it yet. I saw it actually just before I sat down to get ready to record. Um, actually, I saw I saw that he had tagged me in it, but I, I hadn't like gone and looked, and I saw that you commented. I can't wait to read it, but have you read it yet or no? I did. I read it this morning. Okay. I was one of those, like, you know those dumb moments where you, where you like, respond to a tweet? You're like, OMG, can't wait to read this. And then the next thing I literally did immediately was read it. So I'm like, I don't know why I had to tweet that I was about yeah. to read it right before that just I did. Makes you truthful. You said I can't wait and you couldn't wait because you read it. Literally, right away, so. active, literally couldn't wait. Um I know we don't have to get into the whole thing, but Jeff, go read it. It was like it was such a good reflection. Mark is actually a really great writer, so I really love the flow mm -hmm. and the style of the blog. But he really went through his word for 2021. He kind of goes through his journey of trying to identify a word and then in the end was like why am I searching for a word? I have had this word all along. Like it was, it was mm. a really, to me, it was, it was one, you know, the Heather's teacher moments where something happens in your classroom and you're like, that's why I teach. Like I have those moments with students all the time. This yeah. morning it was like, that's why I work with the teach better team. Like that's what that blog made me think. So I'm really, this is nothing to do with the podcast, but I'm telling you go read the blog <laughs> just in case you missed okay. it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. if you're listening, you can go read the blog as well. Do we know? Do we have his handle? Uh, on... uh, I can pull it up, but I also shared it on my Twitter. So if you're following me on Twitter, I literally yeah, yeah. just retweeted it. So you can Mark's find it all, there. I mean, we, we, we tweet a lot of stuff that, that Mark's tweeting out and sharing and stuff too. So It's um, uh, at THS Mr. Underscore Horner. THS Mr. Underscore Horner. Yep. H-O-R-N-E-R. Uh, yep. Yeah, Mark's just a good guy. He is a great writer too. Um, and yeah. Just, so that's exciting. I'm excited to read it now. 
So, I mean, it was anyway, now more so. And his word was better, and we have now what? New Year better swag. So let's touch on the swag because that was something really fun hearts. that we were able to work on. Sorry, um, I just saw green hearts. Um, oh my god, this is gonna anyway. stop. This is gonna like infiltrate the rest of my life. These green hearts, guys. Yes. I don't know if, if you, you caught the twelve hour about, live. Go, go watch the twelve hour live. Um, <laughs> oh my god. So yeah, so we do have. Um, that, that's been. This is one of my fun. I think my favorite like new swag like collections or designs that we've done in a while um and i don't know if it's because the, the incredible joshua stamper did it or or just because but i really love this whole i think it goes to like i'm not a huge fan of like the oh suddenly it's january one so like i can be completely different now resolution thing so i really love this you know it's new year but always better yes. um and so if you don't know what we're talking about we're talking about a, a, a brand new swag collection over at teachbetterswag.com um it's Kind of like our, it's our holiday. I guess it's, is it our holiday swag collection, really? I mean, it's a New Year swag collection. Whatever. It's swag. It's good stuff. There's a shirt. There's there's hoodies. There's mugs. Um, and it's currently still, we're, things are still on sale. You can still get discounted with a better holiday as your, your discount code. Um, and so that whole new swag collection is there. And then also, there's still actually, we have those three special holiday bundles that are big discounts on a, on a group of three or four products as well. So that's all going on. I know people were asking me, they're like, hey, those swag bundles, I really, really wanted one, but I never bought it. Are they still available? And I was like, I'm pretty sure those were only available for a limited time only. But if you're listening to this podcast episode, like around when this comes out, like on the 4th of January, they're still up there. So I know that I should know when those close, but for right now, just go just go check out the freaking swag bundles. Go enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, I don't know when they are neither. We'll see. I think it's I, like I think, next I think week. It's the, I think it's I the think end it's of this week. week. That, yeah. So when you're hearing this on Monday, I think it's the either on sat like Saturday night possibly is one of the I think so. so. That that sounds familiar. So if you're listening right now and yeah. you've been waiting on the swag bundles, obviously you wanted to Make sure that you took care of family and was able to enjoy your winter break a little bit in terms of relaxing, hopefully staying very safe and maybe getting a gift for loved ones. Um, this is this time for a gift for you for the beginning of 2021. This is a great message. It's a part of the Teach Better family as people are choosing their words that you have been seeing all over. This I really love the phrase that on all these swag items for this limited time only collection and with the swag bundles, you can get a lot of those typical teach better items that you see kind of all over and they're all kind of bundled together to save some cash. So don't spend all your money. Take advantage of there being a discount. <laughs> yes. So all of that's over at teachbetterswag.com. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's talk about this episode real quick. Get in this. You already noted uh, Amanda, one of our favorite people in the world. She's been connected with us for so long. So of course the very first thing we talk about was why is like, how did this take so long to get Amanda on this? Uh, she's one of our ambassadors She's an incredible uh, elementary teacher in actually in Ohio here. She represents Ohio amazingly. Um, and I love she she talks about being an inspiration to little minds. And I'm just like, oh, that's so accurate. And then I really love, I'm not going to say it, you'll have to listen, but I really love, Ray, where you asked her a question that was played off that to go to, we, we kind of got into a whole other realm, which I thought was really great. Some really cool inspiration for all minds from Amanda in there. Uh, so this was a blast. Um, I'm not thrilled about you guys plotting to get rid of me, but it is what it is. It could be a lot worse. So anything to add to this before we jump in with Amanda? I think the funniest thing of this episode is that every time before we hit the record button, we're like, hey, we have these typical questions. We might get off topic, but usually we really try and ask as many as possible on this page. And then from the moment this recording started, we got off track we immediately. Off track. So sorry about that, guys. It, it is what it is. So I think that's a great way to go into. So this is episode 236, your first episode of 2021 Ooh-hoo. with the amazing Amanda Post. Hey guys, it's Ray and we'll be right back with the rest of this episode. But I did want to make sure that you knew that we have a really fun giveaway going on. And all you have to do to get registered is fill out a really quick survey. If you go to bit.ly slash reflect TB 2020, we have a quick survey that we're asking all of our Teach Better family to complete just to continue to support you even better in 2021. Once you complete the survey, you are entered to win a $100 Amazon gift card, which might I say, I could definitely use right now. 
And uh, we are going to select the winner at the middle of January. So hopefully you are able to head over and fill out that survey real quick. If you cannot find the link, feel free to DM Jeff or I or anybody on the Teach Better team. We'd love to get it to you. And we really would love you to share your voice for also a chance to win that $100 Amazon gift card. All right, let's get back to the episode. All right, we are here and we are chatting with Amanda Post. Amanda, so awesome to have you on the podcast. This is another one that I think Ray and I are both thinking like, why is it taking this long to get Amanda on the podcast? But uh, here we are. Uh, super excited to, to just talk with you, to learn more about you, to get into your story a little bit. Before we go too far into all that, how are you feeling right now? Oh, man, I am just so excited. And I kind of feel the same way that you do. Like, how did it take this long for me to be on the podcast? Um, you know, I, I'm I'm excited to uh, be a part of this. Um, I've been connected with you guys for such a long time and I've been listening to the podcast for a while and um, I'm just excited to, to be here and share things with you and just hang out. Well, yeah, to preface for our listeners, like this is really not a typical episode. Like we're going to get into the questions. It's going to be fun, but uh, this is like interviewing family. Like we could all be in our PJs sitting on the couch Saturday morning style drinking coffee and still have this exact same conversation. So I'm so excited, Amanda, to dive into all that you've done in education and some really cool stories. I'm sure there will be things I don't know, but I really do feel like this is kind of just a like a hangout with family time. So welcome. I think this is going to be so fun. Um, as, as far as like getting to know you, Jeff gave you an introduction earlier in the episode, but I do want to focus a little bit on that like age old question. Like when somebody asks you what you do, what's your typical response? Well, um, if you'd asked me, you know, a few years ago, it would have been, hey, I'm a second grade teacher from Southeast Ohio, which I am. But, you know, now I think I see myself as an inspiration to little minds. And, um, you know, I, I'm just so passionate about what I do. You know, the whole typical answer, you know, I am Amanda Post. I do teach second grade in Southeast Ohio. I've been teaching for eight years. I taught four years of kindergarten and then I'm in my fourth year of second grade and I am an ambassador for the Teach Better team. Um, but I think that, you know, as I have evolved in my educational journey, I now see myself as more than that. Um, and I, I see myself as as the person who has the honor and the privilege of taking little minds and shaping them to be the future. And um, talk about scary, but also talking like about just fantastic. Mm, I love an inspiration to little minds. I love that. That's, I think that's one of the best I've, I've, I've ever heard that described. Uh, and you really are. And I, I love every time we... We talk every time. I, I feel like every time I, you tweet, I can feel your just your passion for what you do and 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 that what you say. You know, you you have the privilege of doing so. Can we add? Uh, I love it. I'm really excited. Really, Jeff, What's I feel like we have to add a little bit to that because while I'm confident, Amanda, you are an inspiration to little minds. I've also seen you be an inspiration to educators like all stinking year long, and I know it happened even before <laughs> 2020. So I think maybe just like inspiration, like it, of the minds, maybe not of like you know, young kids, but I think of all you, you do so much to support so many people. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. Like coming from you, you know, we, we talk about fangirl moments. I mean, Jeff, I love you, but Ray, oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh that my was gosh. Recorded. <laughs> now, now I am not going to go on recording and say that I am team Jeff or team Ray. Um, Amanda, you just did. It's all we needed. Let's Pretty be honest. Sure you just did, Amanda. <laughs> Aren't, aren't we all a little bit Team Caitlin, though? Oh, oh we are. And Team Schmidt. Oh, this is a yes. big debate here. I know. I know. I wow. get it. Mm-hmm. Um, Love you, Jeff. I really do. I was gonna, I was gonna like add on and compliment you, man. And now I'm not sure I want to go there anymore. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, Ray was saying about you being an inspiration to, to you know, teachers and educators all over too. Uh, you know, just noting that you were one of the speakers at the Teach Better conference in 2019 as well. Yeah, that that was quite quite an experience and I think that you know when we had the email come through that said you've been selected to teach or speak at the Teach Better conference um it was our last day of school and I went next door to my teammate then Maggie Gifford she's also fantastic if you have not followed her please do so um 
sh- sh- I went next door and I went, you have to come here. And she was like, what? What's wrong? And I was like, nothing's wrong. And I had it pulled up on my big Promethean board. And <laughs> she looked at me and I looked at her and she's like, no way. I'm like, yes way. She's like, they did not. I'm like, yes, they did. And we start screaming and jumping up and down. The kids are looking at us like, what are you people doing? <laughs> and I, once we explained it to them, they're like, you get to go teach other teachers. And we're like, yeah. And they're like, that's so cool. So <laughs> for a bunch of second graders, they thought we were completely insane in one moment. And then just so proud of us and so supportive. The kids were like, oh, we can't wait to hear how it goes. And, you know, they were moving on to third grade. And and it was it was one of those kind of capping off a, a pretty good year with something phenomenal. And then, you know, once we got there, it just the feeling of the Teach Better conference just I, I, it's unlike any other. And I, I cannot wait until we are able to safely be together again because um, everyone should go. You know, Jeff, I know that you're trying to get to a question. I'm just going to keep interrupting you. I actually have you. other questions now. So you have other good. questions now? Can I add yeah. one caveat about the conference? Because Amanda, I know your sessions were amazing. You were an incredible leader at that conference, but I just need the world to know, I'm going to say it every time we talk, it was not only that that you added so much value in, but you being somebody that every single person could talk to is something I will truly never forget. I know it was lame the whole weekend. I just kept, okay, our listeners, if you can envision me, every time I was talking to somebody, I would take them over and be like, have you met Amanda and Maggie? Like this is literally like you were such a safe spot for people to be themselves and celebrate and make friends and I don't think I can emphasize enough how important it is that our community is like that for everyone, that we are always willing and eager to talk to everyone and learn with everyone. And uh, I love that part of the conference. Super duper fun. And I feel like you also don't know that from our perspective, we were two teachers who thought, who are we to be in the presence of all of these people? And so every time you brought somebody over, we're like, oh my gosh, it's somebody new and we've got to, you know be on our game. And I'm like, you know what? We're just us. And, you know, Maggie and I have that kind of relationship where it's just easy and it flows. And I think that's what we exude as well. Um, even if we're nervous and worried on the inside, but, um, you know, we made some really great connections and a lot of them probably thanks to you, Ray, because you just kept bringing people over. So (laughs) we appreciate that so much. (laughs) <laughs> it's, I, I want to keep going. Amanda, correct me if I'm wrong. Was that your first time presenting at a conference yes. outside your district? It was. Okay. So I, I think that's an important thing to know. And I really love, I don't know if, if I'm going to have you short, sort of share a little bit more because there are a lot of educators who have so much value to share, so much just amazing creativity and inspiration that they can share, but they have sort of a similar mindset of, well, who am I? Like, why? You know, why would a conference select me? Why would I even try to go speak at a conference, let alone um, why would they select me? Um, Can you share just a little bit about like your prep going in there? How did you and Maggie both get over that? And then sort of what was the feeling after you presented? And like, I mean, you you kind of touched on a little bit, all these different people coming over, but sort of when you left there, was there, what was your level of confidence then? So how did you get there? I'm looking for this, like someone listening right now going, oh, like, yeah, that's just scary to me. I totally get what you were feeling, Amanda, I, but I couldn't go do that. I want to get them over that hump so that the next time they have an opportunity to submit a proposal to go speak at a conference, they take it and then they go with confidence knowing that they're going to bring uh, value to people. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I think you know, the the one thing that made us comfortable with submitting a proposal in the first place was just our connection with the team. And, you know, Maggie and I, we had connected with you. Um, our district brought Chad in for the end of a school year PD. And, you know, we kind of jumped with both feet into the grid method mm-hmm. and did a two-day training and, um started implementing it about a month and a half after our training and, and just the support and the connection that we had from you all, uh, I think gave us that confidence because we had been using the grid method for just one school year when we, not even a whole school year when we submitted that proposal. And, And I think that support was fantastic, but even if you don't have that support from, you know, the people who are running the conference or you know nothing about it, 
the one thing that I have learned over the course of the last couple of years is you just have to take a chance because if you don't, you'll never know. And I think with us, we, we knew that we had a lot to share. We knew that what we were sharing with how successful the grid method was in the primary classroom was something that hadn't really been shared on a, you know, broad scale before. Um, and, and I think that we just wanted the opportunity to try something new. And, and I know it's scary and I know that it's nerve wracking. And trust me, we were hyperventilating seconds before we had people walk into our session. Um, we, we were those people who skipped out on lunch to go set up and make sure that everything was perfect because we wanted that to be the impression people got. But I think what people got from us is just our genuine love for what we do, our, you know, ability to take something new and run with it, even when we don't know what the outcome is going to be for, you know, children our age level. Um, and, and I think if if someone listening is afraid to take that next step, afraid to submit a proposal, afraid to even entertain the idea of going and speaking in front of other educators, I would say just jump, do it because you will find a community of people unlike any other, whether it's the Teach Better family, which by the way, I'm, you know, plugging that one because that's my favorite one um, <laughs> or, or, or any other. Um, j- just do it because you're never going to regret taking a chance when you have so much to share with the rest of the world, um, you're going to regret not sharing it um, on the back end. Mm, I love it. Let's, and, and I want to keep, ch- I, I appreciate you kind of take us there. I think that's really, really important for people to hear. And, you know, Chad, since day one has always said for every problem there is in a classroom, for every struggle we have, there's a solution in someone else's classroom. So we just all need to keep sharing. So I really love that. Let's keep sharing. I want you to share a story with us now. Uh, about a time that you've had a, a failure that you had to overcome. So to take us there with you, what happened? How did you overcome that? And what did you take away from that experience? I, this, this is hard because I'm a person who I fail every single day and I'm okay with that. Um, but I think the biggest thing for me is I had a really rough year. Uh, it was my third year teaching. I was teaching kindergarten. I was also coaching high school cheerleading. I was the head coach for our high school. And so I was being spread in a million different directions, um, never home. And things started happening that were out of my control. We had a couple of students in our district that were killed in a car accident on their way to catch the bus. They were band members for our football game. And one of those um, students had been a former cheerleader of mine. And that happened in the fall and, and it was tragic and terrible for our community. And I was being pulled again, another, another direction to support my cheerleaders and to po- support the students. And, and then my grandfather was diagnosed with cancer and passed away six weeks later. And, and, and that kind of pulled me in a direction. And it was also the same year I was taking my teacher, um, resident exam for the state of Ohio. And so I was filming lessons and doing this and that. And I, I had the worst year of teaching that I've ever had in my entire life. And I remember thinking when the year was over, I taught those children nothing this year, nothing. And you know, it, it's it's easy to say, oh, you know, you leave your your personal life at home and you you bring your only your school life to school. But when those intertwine, it 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 makes it difficult for you to function on a daily basis. And I think the biggest failure, you know, while others may not have seen it as one, it was a failure to me. Was I feel like those kids got nothing out of that year, and you know, I was lucky enough two years later to have them in second grade, uh, my very first year of second grade. And when they walked in that door, they were so excited to see me. And I thought, I have been the worst teacher for you. Why would you want to have me a second time? And what I realized is that to them, it wasn't the worst year of their educational career. It was their first year. And even though to me it seemed like such a failure, like I had been pulled a million different directions, I wasn't focused, I wasn't being my best, they saw me as that first 
stepping stone in their educational journey. And they loved me and they didn't care that I was, you know, crying during my planning time or that I had no energy to prepare new things or to try new things. Or, you know, sometimes it was just hard to get out of bed. So, you know, I I look back at that as, you know, that was a failure for me personally. But the thing that I learned is that even when you're having a terrible day, a terrible month, a terrible year, even a terrible minute, the kids that are in front of you don't care about that. They just care that they love you. And as long as you are, you know, learning and growing from your experiences, it's not a failure. I love that that breakdown, Amanda. It's such an important part of being an educator is balancing our own emotions and trying to give everything we can, right? We talk about like today's best, trying to give everything we can to our students. And I love that reflection and that that ability to say, hey, I really feel like I missed the mark here. But then students to give us the feedback, which we very rarely get to say, no, I loved it. And I, I want to continue to be a learner with you. I, I think that's so powerful. And it really is in, in a line with what you always seem to be doing. You're always trying to give your best. You care so much about your students. And you're always trying to kind of push the bar a little bit to do incredible things with students. And, and I know that so many of your kiddos have benefited from that. When you think about what excites you about education, about your job, about all that you do, what do you think is the most exciting thing right now that's kind of like fueling your fire? I think that the educational world is at a moment where evolution is huge. And, you know, we've learned with everything going on um, in the year last year that I will not name by name for chances it might come back. Um, You know, I, I think that we look at how quickly we had to pivot and how quickly our students had to learn. And and I think evolution is something that is extremely important because I think when we look at what has been happening, we understand what has not been working in our educational system. And we realize that, hey, not every kid has the same opportunities or the same access. And while we might have always known that, it's evident now with, you know, at-home learning or, you know, hybrid models or whatever it is your district's doing. We've been lucky to be in person most of the time. But when we have to flip that switch and go to a remote learning situation, it is chaos because we do have so many kids who do not have the same access or opportunities. And I think that we've hit this point where we all see the the problems and the issues. And my hope is that moving forward, we change those things and we make it a little more, I don't know, a, l- a little more fair for all students when it comes to accessing education. Um, and, and also we look at what teachers are going through and, and how how tough it has been for them And, you know, I've been blessed because I've been in person the majority of the time this school year. Um, But I I think it's it's almost inevitable that things are going to have to change. And I'm really excited to see what that looks like. No, I am, too. That is such a good observation. And it kind of leads us into question five when talking about advice. Like if you had to give advice to any sort of educator, what would be your piece of advice? Communication. Communication mm. is key. I, you know, very early on in my my teaching career, I struggled with communication because I thought I don't want parents to be upset with me. But I was also this kind of reserved person who didn't know how to effectively communicate with parents. And, and I think in the past few years, it's really been something that I've been able to improve as my communication. And what I would say is if, if you feel like you're not communicating enough, keep communicating. Parents may be sick of you, but the more you communicate with them up front, the less problems you're going to have on the back end because you've informed them, 
you've been keeping in close contact, even if it's not one-on-one, if it's an email that you shoot out or you connect with them on a parent communication tool. Or for me, I do Friday video updates with my parents. So I sit down after school on Friday, I record a video, and then I shoot it out on our parent communication tool. And you know, I, I feel like if you are communicating with them in newsletters or whatever it is you do, you are going to have less issues with parents and how they feel about what their child is doing in your classroom, um, whether it's virtual or in person, um, than if you kind of are hesitant to communicate with them. The more you communicate, the more they're going to be on your side. I couldn't agree mm-hmm. more. Great. Yeah. Great, great, great advice. Um, wow. Amanda, I feel like we should just have you on like all the time. Oh, she I'm could be like, up. she could be like a host. Yeah. Oh, that would be fun. <laughs> So I, okay, I was I'm totally with that, but I feel like I'm the one who's gonna get ousted if we do that. Or do you, are you thinking like <laughs> like we're gonna have like three hosts? Like, can we do um, that, Ray? Is that or is that, that too many? That's cute, Jeff. You think that you're gonna be like the third wheel? <laughs> that's true. Haven't you felt that way this whole episode? I'm sorry. Yeah. Is that I'm pretty sure I'd be the third wheel that you guys leave land on the side of the road somewhere. I mean, we'd like check in with you so often and be like, hey, we've recorded like 12 podcasts without you, but do you want to come to the next one? Yeah, mm. we would invite you in, Jeff. I appreciate you could be that. Be a guest. <laughs> can I just yeah? Maybe I'll just come on be a guest instead. That <laughs> sounds like a plan. Yeah, I love how this is going. Um, <laughs> so let's do. We're gonna do the next six, man. We're gonna throw these next six questions at you. Your goal is to answer each one in fifteen seconds or less. You ready? Oh, I'm ready. What is one ed tech tool you cannot live without? Anything Google. It has been a lifesaver. Uh, give us a book you're reading right now. I am reading a book called Eat Smarter by Sean Stevenson, all about how food affects different parts of your body. Who do we need to follow on Twitter or Instagram today? This is not going to be any surprise, but uh, Trey Gamage, he is phenomenal. Um, if, if you don't know his backstory and everything, you need to follow him. Of course, the wonderful Dr. Neil Gupta and one of my favorite people on the planet, Lindsay Titus. Uh, what is a good YouTube channel, website, or podcast for educators to check out? Uh, my favorite right now is Pocket Full of Primary, and you can find them on YouTube, and um, there's also a website. Uh, give us a daily, weekly, or monthly routine every teacher should get into. Take 30 minutes a day for just yourself. And give us the best piece of advice you've ever received. The beginning of this school year... Um, we had someone say to us, go slow to go fast. Mm. Yes. I love that. That is. Well, she rocked that one out. I know. And she not only kept under the timeline, but there you go. You get the teach better talk trophy. <laughs> Kick it <laughs> off the new year. I love this. This is so awesome, Amanda. I literally could talk to you for hours and hours and hours. Every time I know you joined us during our 12 hour live, you're so fun on camera. I'm just so excited to not only have our listeners learn about you, connect with you, but also hopefully see you more, see you more in the Teach Better family. You're so involved in so many ways. We have an internal goal of getting you more involved on camera because you always have things to share. Like during the 12-hour live, you were awesome. So I just cannot wait for all of our listeners to connect with you. Would you mind kind of sharing how they can get connected? Like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, tell me all the things. Yeah. So on Facebook, um, it's more of just like my personal things, but Hey, if you want to see that kind of stuff, go right ahead. Um, it's under Amanda Lorraine post, um, on Twitter, I'm at Amanda post one five one three. And then on Instagram, I'm at Amanda Lorraine one five one three. Awesome. And you know, you can find all the links and all the resources that we've mentioned in this episode over at teachbetter.com, as well as the really important links for connecting with Amanda and keeping this conversation going. So head over to teachbetter.com for all of that. Be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming episodes. And if you can give us a rating and review, we'd really appreciate that as well. And let's keep taking this one step further. Think of just three of your colleagues who need to hear these amazing stories and share this podcast with them. Uh, Amanda, this has been awesome. I'm so happy we finally got you on. Um, I'm not as thrilled about you kicking me out and taking over, but you know, I'll get there. I'll get over it. It'll be fine. But I, I really appreciate you coming on, sharing your stories. I'm so happy that you are realizing how much awesome, uh, awesome is in you and how much you have to share and that you, that you've been doing that now and to be connected with you is, is simply awesome. But thank you for taking time today to hang out with us and chat with us a little bit. Thank you. 
Yeah, thank you guys so much. I, you know, part of my awesomeness realization has come from being a part of this family. So thank you guys as well. Love it. And until next time, let's get out there and let's teach better.